Uh, the, the gentleman who will take over this program is uh, Conan O'Brien. Uh, I've met him a couple of times. The only thing I know about Conan for sure is that he, you know, he's been in prison. That's, that's all I, I don't know. I know he killed a guy. I don't... Uh, and he, um, he's been on the show, and, and uh, as I said to him when he was a guest on our program, uh, I hope for Conan and his staff uh, all of the success and the happiness uh, that we here have been able to achieve, and I sincerely mean that for him and his folks. Uh, also, I, uh, I hope that he finds it in his heart uh, sometime down the road uh, to invite me back here from time to time. I, I, I would get a kick out of that. Um, Our next guest is the personable young host of Late Night with Conan O'Brien, which can be seen nightly on another network. <laughs> which one? There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor and give a nice warm welcome to our friend Conan O'Brien. Conan, come on up. Conan O'Brien. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Ed Sullivan Theater. This is beautiful. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. It's a pleasure to have you here. You know, even if I wasn't somehow involved in this story, I would be fascinated by it. <laughs> Don't you think? Yes, yes. It's a fascinating story, the whole thing. How, how have things gone for you over there? How, has it been kind of a, more of an adjustment than you thought it might be moving? You were primarily a writer, I guess, before yes. this. Yes, I had uh, done some performing, but there are a lot of things, as you know, to get used to. It's a very complicated oh, yeah. job. Yeah. I mean, I didn't understand this when I took the job, but there's someone called a stage manager mm -hmm. on these shows. I'm sorry, what do you say, Conan? A stage manager. Oh. Yes. You should write this down, Dave. <laughs> you see, Dave, TV's a very complicated thing. I'll talk to you after the show. Anyway, uh, there are these stage managers. I didn't know this was part of the deal. Uh, their job is to give you these signals, mm -hmm. like two minutes left, one minute, 30 seconds They keep wrap. you posted. They keep you posted. They're your connection to the control room. <laughs> That's right, yeah. exactly. And uh, you get some strange ones. I mean, about three weeks ago on the show, I'm doing an interview. It seems to be going well. And they hold up a card that says, wipe your chin. <laughs> and I, I felt like Ronald Reagan or something. I, it was very, I, I mean, I remember thinking, is this part of the deal? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I felt like a complete idiot. And of course, everyone in the whole studio knew that I was drooling. I didn't know. <laughs> They hold up a card and the whole audience can see it. Wipe your chin, idiot. And well, they said, wipe your chin, idiot. They added an, an idiot. Oh, my God. We had a, a supermodel. <laughs> we had a supermodel on the show. Beautiful woman. Which one? I don't know, Dave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a one-night stand. I don't know. Hey, and, uh, hello. Look out. And uh, no, but she came out wearing a slip that was just barely, she was barely wearing this slip. And the interview is about three minutes into the interview. I'm in the moment, I'm talking to her, I'm, we're having a good conversation, when they wave a card that says, uh, her breast is showing. Whoa! <laughs> and it occurred to me, why are you showing me this card? <laughs> <laughs> what can I do about this? Yeah. <laughs> if, I try and, if I try and correct the problem, I will be sued. <laughs> That's right. They want me to leave. <laughs> one, one false move and you're in handcuffs. <laughs> I was more than happy to try, but it's very, the other thing I've noticed, uh, you don't have this problem anymore. Uh, you may never have had this problem. But when you do a 1230 show, I've noticed that when people compliment you on an episode, 
they also feel obligated to tell you why they were up that late. <laughs> and yeah. it's very funny. And, I mean, people come up to me and say, you know, I saw you with, uh, with Lisa Gibbons. You were really, uh, it was a great interview. I really liked it. Um, someone pulled a fire alarm in our building. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, you know, I was coming back into the house, the TV was on, or, or someone will say, uh, someone will say, I, uh, you know, I, I saw you with uh, Rich Hall. It was a very funny segment. I, um, I burned my hand about two days ago, and I have a, an ointment or a balm that I have to apply every, uh, every few hours. Every few hours, and so I was applying the balm. The TV happened to be on, and it was not a bad show at all. Time for the medication, and I yeah. just using it as a nightlight. Exactly. Saw you right there. So it keeps my ego in check. Uh, I know more about people's maladies now than I ever. You know, you do. I was on. Uh, you were nice enough to have me on the show a few months ago, two oh, or three. You were months nice ago. enough to come. It was great, and and when I watched the show, I'm very impressed because it always looks like you and your uh, you and your staff, a, a bunch of hardworking, smart people, doing a great show. And I think oh, I think you. it still continues much. to be very oh, I impressive. It. Thank you very much. You know, here our stage managers, <laughs> they take naps next to the camera. I've noticed that. We, <laughs> he's out cold. We'll do us a commercial and continue visiting here with Conan O'Brien, kids. Come on back. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the gigantic program. Conan O'Brien from the uh, very popular late night television program, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. And I found this very impressive. I was told, I guess this is true, tell me if it's not, you received, uh, oh, that's good, Biff, thank you very much. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm doing the best I can. Just put, put that away and go back to sleep, thank you. Uh, I was told that you received a, uh, like a, was it a fan letter from the White House, from President Clinton? Yes, President Clinton uh, sent me a letter, said he was a fan of the show. I think Hee Haw also got a letter. So I, I, no, but... But, uh, no, I was very impressed. I got the letter, and then uh, he followed it up by uh, inviting me to the White House. That's very nice. And, yeah, it was terrific. It was for, this is true, it was for uh, prominent Irish Americans. It was on mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day. And uh, I don't know why one would laugh at that. <laughs> but the, uh, th there were some very famous people. Richard Harris was there. Michael Keaton was there. And then there's some, I think Donnie Most from Happy Days was there. I didn't, also, I didn't know he was Ralph Irish. Mouth. He, it turns out he isn't even Irish. He just has red hair. And... <laughs> So uh, they invited him to, and I thought, this is a great opportunity. Uh, I'm going to get a, you know, when I meet Clinton, yeah. I want it to be this great exchange that I can then live off of for the rest of my Looking life. Looking for a moment. I wanted a great moment. Yeah. I'm in comedy. I can just tell this story, you know, for a hundred years afterwards about my great meeting with the president and what did I say. <laughs> so I'm in line. You wait in this long line to meet the president. And I'm thinking, oh, I might give him one of these, you know, it's nice to meet you. Ah. <laughs> gotcha. You know, I might try, uh, I might try something a little... Uh, something punky, sure. Yeah, something a little punky that I can then tell people, and they'll be like, wow, you did that? <laughs> so I'm thinking in the line, I'm thinking in the line, and you get to the head of the line. It's like a ride at Disney. Suddenly you go over the top, a gate opens, uh, you get to the end of the line, and you're, I'm shot out right there to President Clinton. And I froze. <laughs> I completely froze. All those, you know, wise Alec ideas go right out of your head. And uh, the president said, uh, this is uh, Conan O'Brien. He's uh, one of our late night talk show hosts. And he is, uh, this is Mike Clinton, by the way. Yeah. And, <laughs> Very just, effective. Yeah, I'm just Very. telling you. I'm not an impressionist, but. Uh, <laughs> Could have been Reagan, too. Yeah. Would have worked for either. You just, it's all purpose. Your all purpose presidential a, impression. This is my all purpose <laughs> impression. It could be so many people. And uh, anyways, he's one of our late night talk show hosts and his people are from Ireland. And the Prime Minister of Ireland is right there. And the Prime Minister of Ireland said, uh, tell me, where are you from? Where are your people from? And uh, the Prime Minister leans in like, I really, he wants mm -hmm. to know. And Clinton leans in. <laughs> like, oh man, this is going to be good, yeah. <laughs> he leans in too and there's this moment and I said, I don't know. <laughs> And immediately, immediately the line pushes past me. Donnie, Donnie Most was next. He said something really clever. Uh, uh, you know, he hung out with the president yeah, all night. You become he, an instant boom. Yeah, and so, yeah, later that night, I'm trying to live off this story. Like, you know what I said to him? I don't know. 
Yeah, it sounds, pretty good, huh? It sounds a little like Clinton, a little like Reagan, and a little like Clint Eastwood. So you have kind of a whole You have thing a, yeah, there. it's a collage. You, now, here's a, a part of this story that you are probably sick and tired of talking about, because I think people are under the impression that you, you came from nowhere to suddenly be hosting a exactly. network television exactly. program. Exactly, exactly. But you had performing experience before I had before performing this, experience. I had uh, done a lot of improvisation. I had worked with the Groundlings Theater. I had uh, done quite a bit of work on Saturday Night Live. And I also had, had been doing so well in my performing career, Dave, that... I actually was in the pilot of a very successful NBC really? sitcom, mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason, I'm not really sure why, they, they cut me uh, after the pilot was, was done. And the oh, show so you went, were only in the pilot? I was only in the pilot, and the show went on to become quite successful. I'm, I'm a little bitter about it, but it's not a big I th deal. I think we have a clip of that. We're going to show it if you don't You have look. a clip of it? Yeah. I yeah. don't... I don't Al, do me a favor. Go ahead and roll it. <laughs> don't know about the future. That's anybody's guess. Ain't no good reason for getting all depressed Fire up your pad and pencil I give you a piece of my mind In my opinion, nation, The sun is gonna surely shine Well, I think I think it all worked out for the best I think so, very disappointing Tony, nice to see you. Hey, thanks for having me on, Dave. Great job, and a great job with the show. Say hello to the folks back over there. Tony O'Brien, folks, we'll be right back here. All right. It's all over. We're moments away from being unplugged. Now, here's some bad news. Uh, we've run out of time, and our friend Dave Edmonds will not be on the show tonight. Gosh, I wonder when we lost that time. <laughs> Uh, anyway, he was nice enough to come back and visit with us one night next week. My thanks also to Conan O'Brien and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Monday, Damon Wayans, John Cicada, and from the Texas Rangers, uh, the first man in the history of the American League, a left-hander to throw a perfect game, Kenny Rogers, will be on the show. Good night, folks. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. Pants, pants, pants. When is it, Paul? Have, I, have we done the Academy Awards yet? No, it's a, it's a week uh, from Monday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm having them again every night uh, for the last uh, two or three months. I have these nightmares. I got I to gotta host the Academy Awards, and uh, I, I wait. Oh, yeah, it'll be great. And uh, it's getting to me. It's under my skin. It's making me a little hinky. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, hinky, you know what I'm talking about? Hinky. A little yee -ho. Like that. And I keep having these uh, dreams, uh, recurring nightmares, if you will. <laughs> and it's always the same, but yet just different enough to terrify the holy hell out of me. And I had another one of those dreams uh, no. last night. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rub my forehead, tilt my head back. You're going to hear the music, and then you're going to see videotape of my dream. <laughs> Jeez, I remember it as though it was just, oh my God, it was so lifelike. And now, please welcome the host of the 67th Annual Academy Awards, Conan O'Brien. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enjoy that one. I'll tell you, uh, Louise, I like that Conan O'Brien. He's funny, ain't he? Oh. <sighs> How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the big blockbuster broadcast this evening. <clears throat> uh, last week on this program, and we always like to think of ourselves as right at the cutting edge Absolutely. of American television yes. entertainment. Last week, we introduced something the likes of which we had not seen before. It's the consummate the consummate achievement of biochemical engineering. It's a combination of a giant rat and something that flies. It's a giant rat with wings and it flies and it, it wasn't here last night. I was disappointed, Paul was disappointed, the audience, you of course, you were not here last night, but the audience, and even the stage crew, Corky, you were disappointed as well. <laughs> I hate it when we break Corky's heart, don't you? Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, and uh, that was a Paul Peterson song, wasn't it? Break Corky's Heart? That was Well, beautiful. we're going way back now, aren't we? Yes, and then my dad. It was, that was the B-side of the B -side, my dad. Yes. Break so, Corky's Heart. He anyway, anyway, we found out where the giant flying rat was, and I'm more than a little steamed. Roll it, Hal. Here, take a look at this. He was on that, uh, look, it's the Late Late Show with Tom Snyder. 
There's Good evening, Tom. folks, and welcome Yeah, he's back talking to somebody. He's pretty serious. He's like, okay, it's May the 1st of 1995, and tonight I'm pleased. You know, we've been trying to get Yes, this sir, to nesting in Tom's time. sideburns. That's but, you know, right. seriously, ladies and gentlemen, Good news for young and old alike. I'm happy to say that here in the Ed Sullivan Theater, once again, it's returned home. Ladies and gentlemen, the giant flying rat, Hal! Ladies and gentlemen, The Late Show proudly presents from Sikorsky Aircraft in Stratford, Connecticut, and from the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, and the College of Veterinary Medicine at UC Davis in Davis, California. The magic, the miracle, the wonder of genetic engineering, the giant flying rat! Wow! Oh, man! Are you happy now, Corky? <laughs> I feel great. And, and as we pointed out there, there's not much trouble. Uh, right now, because this is the prototype, you can't, don't expect to go into a pet store and buy one of these. But if you could, the cost for this would be about four, five billion dollars. At least. Yeah. But eventually, when they start mass producing them, you'll be able to pick them up for a buck seventy-nine. Oh. But that, we're talking about years, years, years from now. Uh, you know, uh, every time we do this show, people come from all over the United States, four or five hundred people, they sit in the audience. Well, that means great. Everybody who wrote in for tickets gets in. But for every good story, there's a sad story. People who are waiting, who don't have tickets, they have standby tickets, they don't get in. And because today is such a miserable, rainy day, and these are folks who really want to see a television show, and they didn't get... Hal, turn on the uh, camera out there. Th this would be our standby audience tonight. Look at them. Look at those people. All right, turn it off. All right, Hal, turn it off. There. Thank you. They're getting on my nerves. That's our standby audience tonight. Those are the people that got up at dawn and stood outside in the rain all day hoping to see some kind of a television show, and we disappointed them yet again. And, you know, look, already you folks here have seen the giant flying rat. That's... That's the kind of thing... That's the kind of thing you tell your uh, grandkids and your neighbors about. So I want to try and do something nice if I can for these people. All right, turn it on again, Hal. Hey, who, hey, hey, hi. Yes, sir, right there. You at the head of the line. What is your name, please? Yes, sir, you, right there, stop doing that. What is your name, please? I'm from Germany. Yes, you're from Germany. Well, we'll get you a translator. Oh, please open the doors. And what is his name? Mike. Mike, I'll tell Mike. you what, uh, I want you to be in charge of the standby audience. Will okay. you do that for me? All right, now, in an orderly, single file, and a well-mannered fashion, as quickly as you can. Boy, look at the guy at the end. <laughs> Take a lot of giant flying rats to cheer that guy up. Chris Elliott, isn't it, from the cast of Saturday Night Live? Did he used to work here? Chris Elliott, that's a... I don't know. Chris! We could have gotten Chris a ticket, couldn't we, somehow? <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what. Um, all right, ma'am, quit styling the shirt. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mike. Uh, br look at this. Uh, Mike, bring everybody here into the Ed Sullivan Theater as quickly as you can, please. Be very, very careful. <laughs> Chris? Oh, come on. Sure, I'm sorry. Come on up here. Come, come, come on up here. Sure. Good heavens. All right. Chris, I enjoyed you in Cabin Boy. Hi. Now listen, uh, you folks haven't missed a thing so far tonight. Uh, you know, when you come to New York City, you want to see television shows, don't you? I mean, there, there are like a dozen, 16 television shows in production all the time here in New York City. As a matter of fact, tonight, simultaneously, as we produce The Late Show here in the Ed Sullivan Theater on CBS, the Conan O'Brien show is in production back at, back at NBC. And you know, that's, that's our old show. We, we used to do that show. When Conan O'Brien heard about our standby audience, he was nice enough to invite you folks to go over there. No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, there he is right there. That's, that's Conan's show right there. Okay, so now that's where you folks are going. Yes, we're taking you over there right now to, to, see, to see a television show. Are we going? Come on, come on, folks, here we, here we go. What is going on? Come on, it'll be fine. 
Kind of a hostage situation there. Is that what it, <laughs> what it turned into me? Well, they'll have the time of their lives. Our standby audience now on their way to our old show to see Conan O'Brien. Cool. To me, you can't do love any it. better than that. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to pause for a commercial. When we come back, Angela Lansbury will be here. Nice to have you with us tonight. the uh, program. Angela Lansbury is here, Elizabeth Hurley, and Lou Reed. For my money, you can't do much better than this uh, wonderful show. television program. Now, if you're scoring at home, as many of our viewers do, let's see how that first uh, segment went. Things were doing pretty well, I thought, right off the top. Everybody seemed to be in a good mood. I joked with a very nice man down there right. about my driver's license. <laughs> High-spirited repartee, good-natured yeah. barbs cool. back and forth. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and... Uh, so all that, all that was good, and then we uh, we told some jokes that seemed to go pretty well, and and then with a giant flying rat, everybody that like that. Now, okay, now here comes the problem. All right, we have the standby audience. We see the standby audience out there, and we turn the camera on. And I'm trying to talk to a guy named Gunthar. What's his name? <laughs> Gunthar. I don't know. I can't hear Gunthar. Gunthar can't hear me. But yeah. he's from where is he from? Austria. Sure. He's from Germany. Gunthar is from Germany. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm trying to do something in my heart, what I think is very nice, uh, symbolically, to pay back all of the wonderful patience and loyalty you folks have generated over the years. And uh, so we're going to sort of bring him in here. And first of all, coming in, they don't seem to get the drill about coming in. Right. You think a guy named Gunthar from Germany would have that drill down? You would think. But he'd be able to line guys up and get them in here. But no! He was... He did that stuff. A lot of that. Yeah. A lot of Gunthar with the semaphore signals yeah. to his folks back home there in Berlin. So uh, about 20 minutes later, Gunther and the folks are in the theater. And now I explain to them what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, I said, we, we, we're going to send you over to the Conan O'Brien show. And they, they don't want to go. Right. So I, I, think, I think you'd have to put that down as a mistake that for us be, as well. Yeah. Now, I, now, the Conan O'Brien show is a wonderful show, a very talented man, very nice young man. And they were kind enough to invite Gunther and those other deadbeats to come over there. <laughs> And sit in their audience, and, uh, and so right you now I'm just, and then in the middle of it all, just when you think, oh my God, I'm just praying, so we get to do a commercial and get the hell out of it. In the middle of it all, I see our producer, Robert Morton, behind his little uh, tree house, whatever, he, his little uh, hobby house there, his little clubhouse, he's doing this to me. While I'm trying to talk to Gunther and, and the folks there, uh, he's, <laughs> and I said, what is it, Bob? And I'm like four feet from him, and instead of talking to me, he says this. So I think you'd have to uh, say that the first round so far is a draw. There's Gunther right there. I don't want to name names, I don't want to place blame, but you're looking at him right there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's where it all... Well, hello, girls! See, look at that. Yeah, but they weren't that peppy when they got in here. <laughs> oh, we don't want to go see another free TV show. We want to stay in the lobby. Okay. They, they set their sights a little too high. Okay. <laughs> they rather just stay in the lobby. They're lobby dwellers. That's all they are. That's all they'll ever be. They're lousy lobby dwellers. They don't deserve Conan O'Brien. Paul and I, by the way, that's, that's our old show. That's right. It's kind of sad. You're no help, Paul. Uh. Oh, are they there? Oh, there they are in the van. Let's see if their attitude has changed since the van ride. There's Gunther. No, that's not Gunther. What the hell is happening to Gunther? Here we go. 
Hey, and we're just as nice. We're, <laughs> we're not seeing anything. That's great. There they go. They're scurrying along, going right up. That's a beautiful building. There they go. That's NBC. All right, all right, stop it. All right, doesn't help. Okay, no one's enjoying this. Stop it. Here we go. Okay. Hey, hey! Ladies and gentlemen, here in my right hand, I have a copy of tonight's top ten list. Let's... <laughs> what did you... You just think you were going to finish the show with that? That just sounded like you were never going to stop. I know, I got carried away. <laughs> you just kept going and going. Like, yeah, we're in here for about 40 minutes. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, the category tonight from the uh, home office there in... Go. Oh, here, oh, let's start the music again, Paul. <laughs> Look at this. This is not working at all. Yeah. They're, they're frightened. Something's going wrong. They, they may be arrested. Oh, no, they see... There they go. There's three of them. This is like some kind of outward bound project. The rest of them are lost in Manhattan and they'll never be seen again. There they go. They're, oh, there. Now, see, look, they're in the show. There. Oh, yeah. Now, now they act like they want to be there. Look at this. Look at these little weasels. Oh, my God. It's the Stockholm Syndrome. I've seen it a million times. They're, yeah, they're identifying with the aggressor. Oh. <laughs> now, look at how wow. polite they're being. And Mr. O'Brien is right there. Thank you, Conan. That's Andy Richter. Thank you, Andy. Yes. Good luck. They're wonderful people. I'm sure you'll have a lovely show. Hey, don't, don't be discouraged by the fact that they've ruined our show. Now, come on. Hand out the lays. Okay, that's fine. Let's get back to the top ten list. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a copy. You know, there, there are people like that. What do you mean? Well, they, you know, say there are two parties in any given night, and the folks have been invited to two parties. They go to the first party, they ruin that, then they go to the second right. party, they ruin that. <laughs> There's just people like that. I don't know what it is. Some kind of chemistry. Yeah, they, yeah, I know. They got, <laughs> believe me, go. they're going to ruin that show before the night is done. Yeah, I'm telling you. Great. Yeah, well, we got a giant flying rat. What? White ties? I know. We're, are we a little late? Oh, we've broken Corky's heart again. Oh. <laughs> Don't break Corky's heart. Oh, okay. Corky's heart, if you know what's uh, The category tonight from the home office of Zoo City, Iowa. Uh, top ten other reasons people are suing McDonald's. Ah. It happened again this week. A guy goes into McDonald's, a big pipe and hot uh, cup of coffee, spills it on his lap, suing him for two damn million dollars. Two million damn dollars, I guess is how that goes. Oh, that Gunther. I'd like to check his papers. <laughs> hey, there's yeah. a show. Yeah. Now you're talking. <laughs> Get him back we, over here. Well, I know we're late. We're late. We're late. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Leave me alone. I'm a little nervous. Uh, top ten reasons people are suing McDonald's. And the guy burned himself in the lap and he's suing McDonald's. Okay, it's happening a lot now. Uh, other reasons. Here we go. Did we do the thing? Everything's yeah. ready? Okay. Uh, number ten. Time, folks, now stay tuned for Tom Snyder, Tom's guest tonight, Norm Crosby. Good night, everybody! Worldwide Pants. Every morning I give David a call at work. Hello? Hello? David? No. Ma'am, I've told you, he doesn't work here anymore. I'm sorry. Our first guest not only hosts his own uh, late night talk show, that's our old gig, Paul. I know, I remember yes, it well. Yes, uh, He also has put together a very funny book. I have a copy of it right here. It's called If They Mated. And a look at the cover will give you the general idea. Do me a favor. Please welcome back to the big blockbuster program. Suddenly I'm Walter Cronkite. Here he is, just in from Bosnia, Conan O'Brien. Conan, come on in.
Conan O'Brien. Ah. Conan, how the hell are you, buddy? Doing real fine. Thank you, Dave. Nice how are you? Nice to see you. Happy Super Bowl weekend. How, how are our old friends over there at NBC treating you? Pretty Everybody's good? Everybody's fine. Things are going Everybody's well for you? Everybody's great. Them? Things are going well. It's a big weekend for you and the network because uh, they're carrying, they're covering the uh, Super Bowl 30. Are That's you right. involved? I, I know they want everybody to be involved in that. They, they do. Can. And yeah. uh, the show is, uh, we're in our third season now, and it, it felt like time to promote my show All right. on the Super Bowl, Dave. Well, how can you, oh, they're just going to do some, we've got to buy time? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know if you're aware, it's 1.2 to 1.3 million dollars for, for 30 seconds of time on the Super Bowl. Over a million bucks for a half minute commercial. Yeah, but I felt like it's time, you know? We've, we've, we've been on for a while, it's time to go to the next level, so you I scraped up... You have that kind of dough? I scraped up as much money as I could get together, Dave. Yeah. I don't know why these people are laughing, I find that offensive. <laughs> I'm well, tired of being laughed at, Dave. I'm tired of being... Everyone's <laughs> joke, Dave. <laughs> But laugh away, if you will. I scraped together all my funds, and I, Conan O'Brien, right. bought time to promote my show on well, the Super Bowl. And we a great actually deal of respect for you. We have you. it here. Yes, we do have so it. So this here. is and what people will see now. This is what people will see. I'd like when to when they watch it out Super Bowl here. Thirty. Roll it, the Conan O'Brien commercial. Here we go. Me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty shrewd. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> That's very, very, very savvy of you to be doing that. Very media savvy. That's going to, you know what it is? It's not about time. It's no. about impact. People exactly. are going to see my fat Irish melon. Getter. Yeah, they're going to see it and they're going to think, I don't know what that is. I got to watch that exactly. guy. Exactly. It'd be a lot of stuff like, exactly. what the hell is that? <laughs> Cables on the blink. Now listen, uh, Conan, you're into your uh, third year. That's right, third God, year. God, We've done over uh, 45,000 shows, I believe. <laughs> well, hard to believe, that's, but that's some true. Schedule. How do you feel things are going? What kind of feedback do you get? Are you settling into the job? I'm jobs? settled in. I'm yeah. liquored up every night. People like that. <laughs> it's a more comfortable Conan. You have an open bar before the show? Open bar before the show. It worked, you know? <laughs> the first year I was keyed up, it, yeah, it, no. it uh, bothered people, and uh, it's much better now. <laughs> so you're I'm, gassed every night. I'm drunk now, Dave. <laughs> No, it's wrong. Don't applaud. They shouldn't no. applaud that. That's wrong. No, sir. That's wrong when people do that. It's wrong. I yeah. apologize, Dave. Uh, that was right. cheap, and I feel bad. <laughs> so when you go out in the world now... I go out in the world... Well, what see, is the, the reaction? Is, what are people... It's interesting, you know, for a while there, it was outright hate, which I absorbed. <laughs> I no, just, I find that hard to believe. Oh, I inspire hate in a lot of people, Dave. It's just a charm <laughs> I have. No, for a while, the first year, people weren't sure. They're like, who does this guy think he is? Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Tune in at 1230. It wasn't you. It was me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, uh, it was just... Uh, it was a bad scene, man. Bad. I can use that term. <laughs> and uh, then... And what happened is uh, I'm finding now that people are more accepting, and I actually... That's good. But there are still humbling experiences. Mm -hmm. Like what? Well, I went to... Uh, recently, we shot a remote. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to Cleveland uh, to the Rock and Roll, Rock and Roll Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame. And Shooting we shot a remote there. Shooting videotape for the show. Exactly. Yeah. I went to shoot videotape for the show. We get there. Everybody in the world is at this thing. Sure. A lot of people. Deal. And uh, they have a line to get in. And uh, I'm going in there to shoot my remote. And people start signing autographs. Rock stars, people that are there, important people. It's a frenzy. It's a frenzy, and I'm standing near these people, and suddenly people start asking me for my autograph. There you go. You're And they one start of asking them. me for my autograph, and I'm like, uh, what is this? Okay, fine, you know, and I feel good about myself. I start signing autographs and uh, feeling good about myself, and I really thought, I've arrived. We good go, for you. we shoot the remote. It takes all day. It's the end of the day now. I'm leaving the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Everyone's left. I'm walking through the littered streets. I look down at my feet. My autograph is lying in the gutter. <laughs> no. True story. It's lying there. Best wishes, Conan O'Brien, in the gutter. Oh. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, people were there. It was part of the frenzy. And yeah. someone was just like, hey, yeah, you, you, you. And I give it to him. The guy's like, huh? Ah. <laughs> you know? You know what you need? You know what'll make you feel better? A Sousa March. Here we go. We got to do a uh, commercial. We'll be back here with Conan O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. This book is a, it's a bestseller, I believe, and it's... A, <laughs> yes. no, is oh, it? yeah. I think it is. I don't know. I yeah, have no I think involvement it in It's doing very well. And it's called If They Made It. This is an idea you guys had for your show. Uh -huh. and it's nearly self-explanatory, but let's just take a look at the cover and show folks what we're talking about. This is where we use, yes, this is a, a book where we uh, use advanced computer technology. Hillary Clinton right there. Boy, it's time yeah. for a manicure. Exactly. We use advanced computer technology yeah. to find out what would happen 
uh, if couples were to like mate and have a child. mated with uh, Newt Gingrich yes, right there. Yes, what yeah. might happen. Yeah. And then you get the result, which we is actually right there on the cover. We show and, the uh, progeny. Yeah, and they're right there. And, uh... And you've done genetic research to, to suggest this is accurate. Let me point out. <laughs> let me point That's out. That's pretty much what the baby would look like. Let me put out. Yeah. Let me just say this right now, Dave. This is not a joke. This is not comedy. <laughs> no, as, uh, you people refer to it. This is science. It's good science. And uh, again, I don't know why people are right, laughing at this stuff. Uh, we have a few uh, loaded up. Why don't you take us through the drill? Okay. Here. Well, okay. first of all, this is a couple. They're not actually going out, which uh -huh. is what most of the book is. But uh, Regis Philbin and Kathy Lee Gifford. We decided. What would happen, they're not uh, getting it on, as the kids say. They're but very what would good happen, looking, though. Exactly. What would happen were they to have a child? All what right. might it look like? Regis, and then you get... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I went to high school with her. Yeah, I dated her, yeah. Every I, high school in the world has a woman who looks she, like yes, that. Yes, yes. <laughs> she's... And she's got a good soul. Very nice. Um, Spent a next, lot of time we looked at uh, we looked at a couple that actually uh, just had a baby. We wanted to see what the baby would look like. Of course, I'm talking about Roseanne and Ben Thomas, a very uh -huh. attractive oh, couple. Oh, that's right. Sure. What's they this did. child going to look like someday? And we did some testing, and there you go. Yeah. And uh, now, do these people actually give you blood to do your genetic yes, research? Yes, this is all I done. See. This uh, is all done with uh, blood and tissue samples. Yeah, it's very, very involved by now. people. Sure. Yeah. All right. Who else? Well, this is a very good-looking couple: John F. Kennedy Jr. and oh, Daryl Hannah. They were linked for a while. So this is going to be a a very attractive Peter. baby. Let's take a look at the future and see what's going to happen. It's odd. It's odd the trick's yeah. nature. Nature's cruel. Yeah. You can't really predict it. It just apparently skips a generation nature or something. Nature is often cruel, yeah. 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 And yeah. finally, this is one that's not in the book, but it's a, uh, it's a little bit of treat because I'm here. I did this for you. For me. This is for you, Dave. My gift to you. Uh, what would happen if you and Drew Barrymore were to oh get together? Oh, my God. And oh have a child. God. Let's see what would happen. Oh and then uh, you have. <laughs> Jeez. God. And um, again, that's just good science, Dave. That's all we're doing. So You're maybe. Very, uh, very resourceful. I, yeah. Now, do you have to run right back over there and uh, do your show? I did the show already. So you've done it already. So yeah, the, you're the done show for is, the weekend. Uh, yeah, the show is done. Mm -hmm. I got nothing to do. I'll just hang out here all day oh, and God eat the fresh cookies you. back there. You're, you're welcome to anything you can find. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you here, Conan. Thank, thank, thank you very, very much. much Dave. Congratulations for on your success. Conan O'Brien. We'll be back with Mira Sorvino. Very funny. through time, but we're right back here at our studio. We didn't go anywhere. Time travel machine must not have worked. Um, oh no, look at the time. The show's almost starting. Oh man, come on, let's get dressed. Hey, who redecorated my dressing room? Look at this, Stevie Nicks poster. Yeah, Pink Floyd. And look at this. A Rubik's Cube. Who uses those anymore? No kidding. Andy, look! What? This calendar says 1983. What's going on? Hey. Here are you guys. 
Hey, Dave, it's me, Conan O'Brien. This is Andy Richter. Huh? Yeah, right. Well, listen, no interns in the dressing room, okay? Do you understand that? Security? Why don't you boys find a nice warm place and go screw yourselves, all right? Security! Now let's see, do we, do we have clips to show or do we not have clips to show? What, cl what clips do we have to show? Just holler it out, Bob. Which one are we going to take a look at? In the pool. Oh, from the movie The Stud? Yes. Oh. No! 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 Oh! Woohoo! <laughs> Well, now, you know what you do. Here, here I'm going to give you a little piece of advice because I yes. like you. I have an affinity for you, and I think you're completely charming. When we show this, you're irritated. You can sue us. So, I, so yeah. For what? So, get some of that money back and balance out that random house thing. You know what I'm saying? Are you yeah, really right. show, oh, Don't you want to show a clip from my new movie that's coming out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Are you naked in that one? No. <laughs> then, no. We, no, no, we, 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 we want to see you naked. I'm sorry. That just... All you have to do is buy an old copy of Playboy. Okay, here we go. All right, we'll show the naked one, and then, then we'll show the other one. Or should we show the other one first and then show the naked one? Because it's tough to follow nudity. Huh? <laughs> you do it? You only oh, have you the only pool. Have the okay, here we go. Oh, gee, roll thanks it. a lot. Here we go. Roll <laughs> it. This is uh, Joan Collins. I don't this. believe this. This is I just blushed. Your, your sister wrote, wrote the, the, the book that that was based on? Is that what but it was? That entire scene so was, was based on. She wrote the family. There you go. Yes. Man, I enjoyed that. I yeah. feel better already. Oh, I'm glad you do. Is this what you were trying to find me doing when you burst into my dressing room that day five years ago? Well, you wanted to find me no, like this, that. This, and believe that me, this, I, I, I hope hey, you forgive us for bad, that. that wasn't too bad, actually. Yeah. yeah no, that wasn't bad at all, was it? I was thinner it? then. Yeah, okay. But then who was it? We... What are we doing? We have to do a commercial. Joan, thank you very much for your time. Good luck in court. I'll come oh, down and dear. do what I can. Joan Collins, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Robert Downey Jr. But I'm a bit Irish, too. I think we talked about this last time. Yes, we did. You know, yes, yeah. most definitely. All right. Well, uh, where are you off to now? You're going to Sam's Club. Is that right to promote I'm the book? I'm going to Sam's Club. I'm going to, oh, Minneapolis, Detroit, um, Dallas, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and mm -hmm. L.A., okay. ending up in L.A. So I'm going to kind of crisscross America for the next five or six days, mm -hmm. which is going to be pretty exhausting. And I'm not only not traveling with my own sheets, I'm traveling just with a, a wheelie. You know, one of those little bags, well, we call it a wheelie in England. You don't know what a wheelie is? It's one of those little bags like that with a zipper and it's got wheels on and you just put all your things in and you just wheel it around. Get on the plane, don't have to check in your luggage. It's called a weenie? A wheelie. <laughs> oh, a wheelie. <laughs> Did it's you think she was saying wheelie? No, see, wheelie. Oh, wheelie. I was hearing wheelie. 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 Yeah, I was hearing it's cool. I'm going to bring this weenie around. I thought it was like yeah. some nerdy guy you travel with. I swear to God. I... No. Okay. Would I travel with a nerdy Excuse guy? Me, I don't know. No. Oh, my God. 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 Question for uh, Ms. Collins. You were on our show about a month ago. Yes. And I, we, in like the second oh, segment, no. we showed oh, no. this film of you naked in some oh, movie. God. The movie was like The, the Stud or yeah, The Stud yes, 2 the stud or S, yes. More Stud mm -hmm, or yeah. can we, can somebody call me a stud? Something. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so uh, we so showed the show the film of you naked, you and it was, it was lovely. She looked absolutely lovely. That's why he's yeah. here. <laughs> and <laughs> why the second repeat performance? And, and then now, so then later, and I thought you enjoyed yourself, and then I later did. I read in the paper that you're pissed off. No. Now all I want were you pissed off or not? No, I was hiding. No, no, I mean you can tell me. I don't. You're not pissed know. off. <laughs> you can tell me because, no, because can, look, because I know you don't want any more litigation. I don't want any more litigation. We can Why settle this now. You either were pissed off or you weren't pissed off. Listen. I'll, I'll show you some clips of some Italian films I did. Next time I come on your show, you can show those. Well, and I won't the be hell with the it. film. And there what he was. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Over so <laughs> summing up, then, you were not pissed. No, I was. Oh God, I bless you, John. She wasn't I pissed. pissed. She wasn't pissed. pissed. Nothing to say after that, ladies and gentlemen. Joan Collins, I believe that was David Letterman. We'll be right back with Bad Religion. Stick around. What do you got there? What is that? I know, we got a joke left? Oh, we have a leftover joke? Really? We have a leftover joke? You mean I didn't do a joke? Well, we're out of time. We don't really have time for an extra joke. Let me see. Oh, wait a minute. I have an idea. Give me the, uh, give me the, here, you just stay there. I know. No, you better come with me. Come to think of it. You better, you better come with me. I got to get rid of this. I got to put on my glasses. Put on my glasses. Right this way. Come on. Here we go. People heard this, but Michael Jackson is back in the news. He announced today he's going to open a chain of theme parks. Yeah. Yeah, apparently, apparently he was disappointed when he found out that the... Hi, Conan. I, I, I have a little something for you. Stay you right have something there. for so, me? Right there. Be right back. Oh, that's Tony, very come nice. Tony, come here, come here. There, look at this. It's a joke I had left over. I thought I'd bring it right over. Over the over the <laughs> you like it? Try it. You like it? Here, 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 here. Take it to the other guy. There, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, folks, as you know, it's spring now, and uh, I don't know, romance just seems to be in the air. <laughs> yeah, and uh, in fact, this morning I was walking through Central Park, and a squirrel tried to mate with my hairpiece. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the birthday of this man right here, Tony Inky Mendez. Happy birthday, Tony. Nice job. We gotta do a commercial. We'll be right back, kids. And a boy. We got a tough guy here. Right over there. Right over there. Stand up and take a bow, sir. Hey, look at him. Every show's got to have one. We got a tough guy. <laughs> things are under control. Speaking of things under control, earlier today, uh, President Clinton, President Bill Clinton, uh, the most powerful man on the planet, President Clinton had his uh, annual uh, physical. That's right, he checked into the Bethesda Naval Hospital and filled up specimen jar one. So that was... Specimen jar one. <laughs> specimen jar That's one. Like, like Air Force yeah. one. That, yeah, like, like Air Force <laughs> I, one. That's right. Uh -huh. Did you meet the tough guy, ladies and gentlemen? Right over there, in case you're gonna get in trouble. And in a related story, next week, Bob Dole goes in for his annual autopsy. So that's... Ah! 
go home. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you people like that joke? Yeah. You, you know what that's based on? It's a joke about Bob Dole being old. And you, re you enjoyed the joke? Yeah. That's, that's great. I'll be right back. That's terrific. Excuse me. Do you? Clinton is fat? No, no, help yourself. Hi. I'm doing Dole is old. Uh, great. Good luck <laughs> with that. Good to see you. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye, Clinton. there we had been away at camp you know ladies and gentlemen our first guest not only hosts his own very funny late night talk show he also is the leggy cover model featured on this week's issue of tv guide <laughs> do me a favor please welcome back our good friend conan o'brien conan Sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, program. Thank you very much because I know how busy I am. Uh -huh. You, sir, must be equally as busy. So I really appreciate you figuring out a schedule whereby you can come and see us. Thank we you. We just very did much. a mediocre show tonight and came here to do a good one, Dave. <laughs> that was the plan. And a boy. Yeah. I appreciate that. We do the crap over there, the good stuff here, <laughs> folks. You, you may be too late. <laughs> um, congratulations uh, being on the cover of TV Guide. Oh, Man, thank you very is this, much. Is yeah, big it's... time, Mr. Big yeah, Shot, Mr. That, TV. Uh, Look at this yeah. guy right here. Thank you. Very, very cool. That's not my body, by the way. <laughs> That's uh, David Copperfield's body. They well, just put my head on it right sure, there. Sure, why not? I was uh, real happy, though, because that's actually a, a pretty cool cover, I thought. Yeah, I saw I think that it and I thought, nicely. well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What TV Guy does, Dave, is they have a policy of shooting many different covers and then they pick which oh, is that one right? and i was really nervous because i i wasn't that happy with some of the mm -hmm. other options yeah well this they, one came out great this one i'm glad they chose that one because i actually brought the ones they were thinking of maybe oh, going really? with. Well, let's, let's take a look i think they're here so they gave you you got to take a look at the uh, yeah the i think i gotta move this mug maybe yeah. just so people can see yeah but uh, this was like the first one they thought maybe about doing and i wasn't too happy there i don't know if you can get a shot of that but look at that i just wasn't too <laughs> Yeah, the, baby, the baby a late, a late night. night. Yeah. That's yeah, just not good. Very high concept. No, there. I didn't yeah. like that one. And then there's this one. Some They're Bob trying Hope to props. be nice here, but yeah. look at that. I, I just didn't go for this one. Flush with success, with success no, right I, there. I think that that would be disturbing to your parents. No. But, yeah. All That's right. a photo I actually had lying around. This one bothered me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I had that. I just said, you want this one? And, and, uh, and this one right here, I, I wasn't really happy with. Conan delivers the comedy. Oh, no. You don't. That one. Uh, <laughs> well, wait, maybe I should have used that one. It's, people seem to be responding. 
Maybe yeah. I should have gone with that. And Everyone then, loves motherhood. Yeah, and then this one, I, uh, I'm, I'm really glad they didn't go with this one. Uh, this one, I, I'm, I'm just glad that we avoided it. There it is. Uh, right there. Does TV <laughs> suck or what? <laughs> Cover. And I just thought... No, I think, no, that, that <laughs> raises more questions than it answers. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, exactly. you did a nice so, job. I don't know. Now, when, uh, when you were a kid, and yeah. you're, you're still not that old, you're not a kid. I'm in my you're... late 50s, Dave. Yeah. Um, I'm aging quickly. You, uh, did you watch a lot of television? I was did. It a huge, well, it's a huge influence on everyone's life. Yeah, I loved a, a TV, rerun TV when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I watched a lot of Hogan's Heroes, Yeah. I remember. And one of Bob the Bob Crane. There he is, Bob Crane, Bob a star Crane. that he played. Died uh, mysteriously in a Phoenix <laughs> hotel room. <laughs> I always well, like to point that out. Well, gee, thanks for helping me out with the comedy here, Dave. I'm that's sorry. a nice little that's wrinkle we can add. That's the only thing I know about Hogan's Heroes. All right, well, yes, that's true, Dave. Now let's see if I can wring a little chuckle out of this. No, he, uh... <laughs> He, uh, it's, it is uh, actually uh, an amusing thing about having jobs like this is you watch these TV shows mm -hmm. and then these characters come into your life, you meet some of sure. them, and it's like they're making a cameo appearance in your life. I watched a ton of uh, Hogan's Heroes when I was a kid. One day I'm out shooting a remote piece. Mm -hmm. I'm out on the out street. Out on the streets of New out York. Out on the streets sure. of New York with my uh, drummer band leader, Max Weinberg. Mm -hmm. And we're out there and we're shooting this piece and all of a sudden, rushing around the corner right on 68th Street, comes Werner Klemperer who played Colonel oh, Clink, yeah, sure. and, he's, and he's walking very quickly, just monocle. like Colonel Clink. He has, he had the monocle, he had the riding crop. No, but he looks just like him. He's walking quickly, walks around the corner and goes, hello, Conan, good to see you, the show's doing so well. Give my best to Andy, hello to Max, I must go now, 30 days in the cooler. And he went right off again, yeah. and I thought, I thought that's just like having a cameo appearance by Colonel Clink. In your life. In your life, yeah. One yeah. of the perks of being in show business. Yeah. Exactly. I think he was strangled, Bob Crane. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. Uh, actually, he I was, think he was bludgeoned. bludgeoned. That's right. He was bludgeoned. With a lamp, wasn't he it? was bludgeoned. Beaten uh, to death with a lamp. They don't yeah. know what blunt instrument actually <laughs> killed him, Dave. But he was bludgeoned. <laughs> and I think I have photos of the crime right, scene. I'll go get them now. Sure. This will lighten up the evening. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, we got to do a uh, commercial break and then we'll come back and continue visiting here with our friend uh, Conan O'Brien. here, ladies and gentlemen, on mm -hmm. the Big Big Late Show, and also uh, Blues Traveler. Now, Conan, yes, um, I believe uh, the last time you were here, you, you referenced having been a guest at the White House. Yes, that's right. I've been and invited now, to the White House. I understand yeah. you've been back. I've actually been back. So you've yeah. been invited to the White House twice. Yeah. What happened was the uh, the president of Ireland, Mary Robinson, very nice woman. Uh, was invited to a big state dinner, and so they have to scrape up all the Irish people. Every Irish person living in... I have no illusions about this, Dave. I know why I'm there. And uh, they literally were like, what about that guy? All right. And so uh, I was invited and actually uh, got a chance to meet the president and, and How big uh, see a deal him again. Is this? Is like thousands of people? Or? Yeah, it's thousands of Irish people. Yeah. It's like pretty much every Irish person they could find and who you had, had you a job. Like a you know? dinner? Is that what it is? A yeah, they had a dinner and they had a receiving line. and. Uh, it was interesting, you know, seeing the president again. I actually, though, thought it was a little awkward because I thought the president was a little condescending, actually, to, really? the, to he, the president. I thought Clinton was a little condescending to the president of Ireland, myself. Uh -huh. I thought that he talked down to her a little bit. And uh, I actually, there, there's footage of the event. And I can narrate, if you want, I'll narrate uh, what exactly happened. Sure, no, absolutely. Be we my have guest footage. Then. This really happened. This is right. not... Conan O'Brien at the there's White There's my House. girlfriend there. There's the president saying, hello there, nice uh -huh. to see you. Who is your girlfriend? Uh, let's not talk about that now. Nice, and to then, uh, nice to see her back again. Yeah, exactly. It? And then <laughs> he says, uh, this, uh, he says, this is some Irish guy we scraped up. Uh, uh -huh. We couldn't get Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> And then he says, uh, he's a TV talk show host. Now look at this, TV talk show host. He says, you know, TV talk. Yeah. <laughs> and she told him to piss off. And yeah. so I thought it was... But she, she had kind of, a lovely gown there. Kind I of just a, thought, yeah. Future. Very nice woman. I just thought, you know, she deserves better than that. You, uh, 
you were in, uh, and I don't know when this was, you were in Indiana, my home state. My I was in your you home in state. What the hell were you doing there? I was there uh, on Monday. I was visiting the local affiliate, doing a little stuff for It's them. a great city, isn't it? Yeah. Now, come on. No, no. It is. It's very nice. No, it's it is. very nice because people are very, very smart there. People are very, very friendly there. Yes. Uh, All those things I, are true. I, I've always said that the people in Indiana are like 40% uh, nicer than you find anywhere. They're in the very country. nice people. And the food is like 40% tastier. Yeah, everything's good. And Bob Crane was not bludgeoned there, too, which is a nice thing. <laughs> so it's just, it's got everything going for it. And I think, you know, I think with that Bob Crane thing, I don't, I don't think they found him for quite a while, either. <laughs> and it was, uh... It was a very hot uh, yeah, week, no, no. too. What? You started it. Sorry. But I look up to you. I follow you in so these things. So you're in uh, Indianapolis. I'm in Indianapolis. Yeah, and you, you loved it. It's a great town. It was the best place I'd ever been. And what was nice about it, Dave, <laughs> is that what was really nice about it was that uh, I was invited to the uh, the Indy 500 Speedway, ah, and I'd never yard. been there. The, the Indianapolis Brickyard. Motor Speedway. And I know that the you're Citadel a... The Citadel of Speed. Exactly. All those things. And I know that you're a big race fan, so yes. I know you'll be impressed with this. I'm there. Motorsports. And Motorsports. And you like the fast cars and, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. the good times. And I get to meet... <laughs> <laughs> and I get to meet... I get to meet uh, Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt. They Mr. introduced NASCAR. me to Dale Earnhardt, and yeah. I guess he's a big NASCAR racer, and Iron I meet Head. him. Very not Ironhead? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't call him that. Sure, I'm glad. No, yeah. And uh, I meet him. It's very impressive. And then he told me, and this is true, he said, do you want to take a spin oh my God. around oh, the raceway? You got to, sure. I was excited. I thought, yeah. this is really great. And I thought I was going to get in the passenger side of his NASCAR. He'll get in the driver's side and drive me around in his cool car. <laughs> so this really happened. He said, all right, I'll take, let's go for a spin. We walk outside the garage, and he points to a red Dodge Caravan. Yeah, right. Sure. Seriously, a red Dodge Caravan that would belong to the director of the Indy 500 Speedway. And he says, let's take that. You drive. Uh -huh. Well, that's, so, oh, that's even better. Yeah, King Nerd going yeah. around the Indy 500 Speedway in a Dodge Caravan. That, that doesn't make any difference. With, it doesn't gets make better, any difference. With Dale Earnhardt sitting next to me. So... I get in this thing, I strap in the shoulder thing, you know, I put on ABBA, you know, on the, on the, on the sun, and it's, it's playing, and, uh, and, I, and I start driving, and Dale Earnhardt, the coolest guy in the world, is sitting next to me, and I just do, it's a big, tall car, so I'm doing 55 around the speedway, taking the corners real slow, there were groceries in the back, yeah. there's a baby seat, Dale Earnhardt kept saying, uh, and finally he took the wheel and just said, just lean on it, so I got it up to 70, Dave, yeah. I really had this thing cooking, thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, I really had this thing going, and then when I left, he wasn't that impressed with me. Yeah, I but have you, to tell you. you know, nonetheless, the experience is, uh, that should, should have been for you a thrill of a lifetime. Not, it was. not everybody gets to do that. And I I'm, I'm think Dale Earnhardt's thinking of driving a Dodge Caravan yes, in the next sir. Indy 500. I saw him painting a number. Uh, Conan, uh, yes. it's uh, always a pleasure to have you with us, and congratulations again and always on the success of your project over there at NBC. I Thank you very be, much, be happier And for thanks it. for having me. Yes, I sir, appreciate anytime. it. Thank Conan, you, sir. All right. seem to go for that. I know. Uh, I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, we got a, a blockbuster. Is it a blockbuster or a barn burner? Hey, it's both. It's both a blockbuster and a barn burner of a show tonight, and, and so much more. Conan O'Brien, let me tell you a little something about uh, Conan O'Brien. Once upon a time, Paul Schaefer, uh, my friend and I, we had a little show uh, over at NBC. <laughs> And, and I, it was called uh, Late Night. And in the beginning of the show, they came to us and said, what do you want to call the show? And so we had meeting after meeting after meeting. And it went on for literally a month of what do you call the show? Just because we couldn't come up with a really good idea that everybody would get sick of in a day or two, we just said, oh, Late Night. Yeah. So that was the name of the That's show. That's how it happened. That's the name of the show. Uh -huh. And now, uh, Conan, uh, and, and, oh, and by the way, uh, P.S., uh, I got my ass fired. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, I was not a happy camper when that oh. happened. 
So then uh, they brought in a, a nice young man, Conan O'Brien, and, and he's uh, been doing the show that Paul and I used to have called the Late Night. It's still called Late Night and doing very well. So yeah, awesome. It's a little behind the scenes uh, story there for you. <laughs> Well, it's not as good as your no, countdown a, to the millennium. Yeah, no, thing. it's a cute start. Okay. <laughs> Our first guest is the uh, funny and talented host of uh, NBC's uh, uh, aforementioned late night program. Ladies and gentlemen, here's our good friend, Conan O'Brien. Conan. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, that's a pet peeve of mine when I host the show, is yeah. guests that come out and stand for too long to ignore... Have you had experienced this? <laughs> yeah. And the host cannot sit down... You don't down know what to do. It's awkward. ...until the guest... And so you'll have someone like Wayne Newton come out, <laughs> and he stands there... <laughs> Wait a minute, you... Thank you very much, everybody! <laughs> and then he'll stand, and long after people have left the building... <laughs> yeah. He's still standing there, acknowledging a love that's just not there, Frank. Uh, you've had Wayne Newton? You've had Wayne Newton on the show? Yeah, we've had Wayne Newton. That's pretty impressive, huh? Impressive for me. How are the, uh, how are the holidays? you have a nice time? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. I, did, I got my parents uh, what I thought was a really great gift. Where do your folks live? They live uh, just outside Boston, Brookline, Massachusetts. So you, so you went home for the holidays, a nice family. Went home gathering. for the holidays, and usually I'm, at the, I'm one of those guys that goes to the mall at the last second and buys deodorant for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and this time I got the deodorant way ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, so what I did was, I was thinking ahead, my parents had their 40th wedding anniversary. Oh, pretty good. Uh, thanks for acknowledging that with applause. And um, <laughs> it's a cold room here. It ain't like Wayne Newton's here. Yeah, right. So... Uh, <laughs> So my parents had their 40th wedding anniversary in August, and I was thinking ahead, and I, uh, knock it off, and I, uh, <laughs> what I did was I hired a photographer to come to the that's anniversary. A, that's a great idea. Take pictures, and I Put said... Put together a family photo album. Nice, beautiful photo album, leather on the front, and it's very expensive. It's taking a while to put together, and it's just almost Christmas time, and this woman who's putting it together calls me up, and she says, uh, Conan, what I like to do on front of the expensive photo album is I like to emboss a monogram oh, in good. gold. Perfect. And what you traditionally do in these situations is you take the first initial of your mother's name, and then you do the first initial of uh, the last name of the family in the middle, hmm. and then you end with your uh, father's first initial. Oh. Three letters right there. And I said, fine, go ahead, do it. So the photo album shows up. The photo album shows up. It cost me a fortune. And my mother's uh, first initial is R. She's Ruth. Ruth, yeah. First initial, last name is O, O'Brien. Mm -hmm. My dad's uh, first initial, his name's Thomas, is T. T. <laughs> so I, I spent a fortune on this yeah. thing. Happy uh, 40th anniversary, Mom and Dad. Rot! <laughs> Just rot! And, and, that's too bad. My mom. <laughs> You think somebody would have caught that before they... I wasn't thinking, and, and, and so up. my mom's crying, and I just have to go with it. Yeah, why don't you just rot there? Well, <laughs> Unexpected acrimony. Very, yeah, yeah. Now, when you, when you get together, is it, uh, I, I'm, I have the sense, and maybe you've told me this before, it's a large family. And you, do you spend... You're assuming that because I'm Irish. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> just another cheap stereotype. I hear you people uh, <laughs> sit around eating potatoes and drinking scotch. It's a lot of fun. Uh... My, uh, it is a big family. Uh, there are a lot of kids in my family. And I get a kick out of my mom. I love my mom, I'll say that, because sometimes I talk about her. <laughs> You're going to hit me if I do that again, aren't you? Feel free. Make yourself at home. <laughs> okay. Um, my mom is funny. Uh, she comes from central Massachusetts. She grew up there in the uh, 1930s, 1940s, and she has these just great expressions that no one uses anymore. If someone's a wise guy, she doesn't call them a wise guy, they're a little fresh. She'll say, you know something, Conan, that Dave Letterman, he's a bold stump. <laughs> a bold stump? I don't know what, I have no idea where that comes from. Uh, he's a bold stump. If she's all confused and it ends and at odds with herself and she says, I'm all, I've got to say, I'm sorry, I'm a little Randy Boo. 
Randy Boo. Randy Boo. I don't know if people have heard that one. So my favorite one, though, is uh, she has trouble talking about, you know, intimate things, as, as many uh, mothers do, and, and sexual things, and so, especially scandalous things. So uh, she cannot just say that someone's having an affair. Right. She can't say that. So I'm home for the uh, holidays, and I'm talking to her, and she says, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, she found out that a friend of hers, we'll call him Steve, um, <laughs> Steve Jonas, we'll call him that because that's his real name. Uh, we found out that Steve Jonas is having an affair. He's a neighbor of ours. No, uh, no, he's not really a neighbor. He's a guy that just lives, but he went on. He's having an affair with somebody else uh, in his office, and so uh, my mother says, "You know, I'm, I got to say, I'm all Randy Boo. I'm all Randy Boo, <laughs> because that bold stump, Steve Jonas, apparently." Uh, and she wanted to say he's having an affair with the secretary. She said, behind, behind uh, his wife's back is, uh, is playing patty fingers. With patty, fingers. <laughs> patty fingers. Patty fingers. And, and so what I envision is, and my, my mom's telling me this story, I just envision someone going to like a Motel 6 with somebody, <laughs> and they draw the shades, and they take the phone off the hook, and then they go, <laughs> <laughs> this is just great crime. <laughs> Paint right. But when you, when you are playing patty fingers, believe me, it takes a bold stump. <laughs> I've often heard that to be true, Dave. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how long ago this uh, happened for you, but uh, welcome to the world of dog ownership. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got Has a it dog. Been, been a while? It's brand new? How long ago? It's a... Uh... I got a, um, I got a golden retriever. Mm -hmm. His name's Hudson. And, oh, uh, that's, that's a little. Isn't it a little? Isn't that just a little Hudson? Is that just it's the, the most? Retriever? I mean, I know people always say that their dog is the cutest dog. I, I swear, my dog is comedically cute. It's mm -hmm. just like so cute that you just laugh practically right, when you yeah. see the dog. Really cute, beautiful dog. And uh, I was up in Connecticut hanging out there a couple of weeks ago. And my dogs, I have a little house up there. And my dog's dog Hudson. And dog right. Hudson running around the is yard. That, is that the name really, Hudson? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he cares if I say his name. But is, is, yeah, it's not like Larry Jonas or whoever that guy was. Is it? I'm changing Hudson's name so he won't get prank phone calls. But is it, isn't it just a little, a little, I mean, is that really, you know what I'm saying? Isn't his real little? name is Kooky Doo. <laughs> I was just embarrassed to say that that was his real name. No, Hudson is his name, a little Hudson, and he's really cute. And I'm kind of, you know, playing around with him in the yard. And suddenly this dog ran out of the woods. And it was one of those dogs that hangs out. A feral woods. dog. A, a dingo, maybe. And it was a dog. <laughs> Might have been. A dingo that <laughs> ate my baby. And uh, Meryl Streep was there. Yeah. We had a good time. So I'm, uh, I'm playing with the dog. And suddenly this dog runs out of the woods. And it's one of those. It's, it's not a pure. It's just pure breed. It's just some dog that's been hanging out in the right. woods. And uh, it's got a car, so you know someone's feeding it, but it's, it's kind of ugly and it's really lean and you can see it, strong dog. And it starts running circles around my dog, mm -hmm. just like 50 miles an hour running yeah. circles. And my dog is trying to keep up, doing the best he can, like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and trying to do the best to keep up with the, the dog, but it can't. This dog is much faster, much stronger, much smarter. And I realize that looking at this other dog, that my dog has just been genetically engineered to be cute. 95% mm -hmm. right. of the chromosomes in its body is just so that it will look good on a Hallmark card sticking out of a basket. <laughs> and, go, and that evolution has taken care of this other dog That's right, yeah. and given it superpowers that a dog should have. Yeah. Your dog looks good riding around the back of a Volvo station wagon. Yeah, with a bow on its head. Right. You know? yeah. That's all it's good for, really. Now, did you, your dog, did you, did you find him near the river? <laughs> Is there anything? Oh, well. I have a lot of respect for you, and I really like you. <laughs> but when you mock my dog, you just go too far, man! <laughs> Settle down. I'm sorry. sorry. I know Dave, you snapped. It's an incredible amount of pressure at 1230. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, trying to get Wayne Newton back. <laughs> uh, now, I understand, and I, I'm very flattered that you did this. You brought a clip for us, a film clip, and I didn't even know you were in a, a movie. So that's great. Congratulations. I, uh, 
I'm not in a movie, no. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no, it's me. You know, God forbid I'd be in a movie, no. <laughs> I'm not in a movie. I just know that these big, you know, big 11.30 show like this, every time I watch, guy comes out here as the first guest, he shows Got a clip, a clip Absolutely. from his big movie. That's right. And I wanted to do that, so <laughs> I'm not in this movie, but I thought that this would blow everybody away, so. Wow. You brought a clip, but you're not in it. Pretty good. All right, you need you need to set up this clip you're not in. Other this than the is going to blow in. people away, <laughs> and this is going to put me on the map, my friend. Okay, here we go. It's a clip. He ain't in it. Enjoy. Once upon a time, Conan O'Brien was going on Dave's show, and he wanted to show a clip that would really impress everyone. So he decided to show the Star Wars trailer. <laughs> Check it out, yes, sir. Oh, man. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year and Happy New Year uh, all to the you. best to you, sir. Yeah, and Conan O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back to tonight's top ten list and Alanis Morissette. Brian Green, this uh, 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 astrophysicist, and we'll talk all about the, the universe and any, and any questions you may have about anything. Here's the guy right the universe, here. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to mention uh, one thing. You know, remember, Paul and I used to have a show over at NBC, uh, and then they w fired Paul. <laughs> and in support, I, I quit. I'll I said, never forget. I said, never if you're going to fire Paul, then I'm, I'm going with you. Uh, but anyway, that show was called uh, Late Night. Late Night. We were on the air for 12 years, and it was taken over by Conan O'Brien. Yeah. You know Conan O'Brien. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, listen to this. Uh, Conan and his wife, uh, Liza, uh, yesterday at 5.30, 5.13 p.m., had a baby girl, their first That's child. How about that? Thanks for that. And I'm... I think her name is Neva, although it, uh, I'm not sure. N-E-V-A, I think that's Eva. Her. Yeah, that's it's a beautiful so con name. Yeah. yeah. So congrats. I thought it would be Conette. <laughs> so Eva's beautiful. Congratulations uh, to Conan and his uh, wife uh, on having their first baby girl. That's a very nice yes. thing. Six, six pounds, ten ounces. Johnny Lang is also on the program, ladies and gentlemen. Here's tonight's top ten list. Let's do this. Jack Hanna. It's funny that we um, uh, mentioned the, the petting zoos because when Jack Hanna comes out, it'll be a kind of like a petting. It's a coincidence, yeah. By the way, did you hear this? That Conan O'Brien is taking over the Tonight Show. Did you hear that? When when does that happen? It happens in uh, uh, 2009. <laughs> <laughs> five years from now. Five years from now. Yeah, Jay Leno has decided he's stepping down after uh, in, in five years. Jay Leno stepping down? Yeah, it's apparently getting to him. So in five years, <laughs> he's stepping down in five but years. But he does nothing but work, That's Jay right. Leno. Yeah. He, uh, I don't he know. Loves I don't know anything perform. about this. And uh, so they announced that NBC uh, releases a Conan O'Brien. Uh, he'll be doing the Tonight Show. Good for him. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. I wonder if I can get a tape over there. <laughs> and um, Maybe a little late. <laughs> yeah, a little late. <laughs> but anyway... All our best to Conan when he yes. takes the job in 2009. Five years from now, yeah. I think Halley's Comet comes back in 2008. Ah, uh, no, but it's great. That's, That's so funny about Jay Leno, yeah, I don't understand any Stepping of it. down. I don't get any of it. I guess he'll do a play, spend more time in Vegas. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's tonight's top ten list. Let's go. I 
I think he said he couldn't take it another minute, so he's leaving in 2009. Five years. <laughs> yeah. How does stuff like that work? I don't know. It's wonderful, though. Uh, Conan O'Brien, it's great. You yeah, know. he's a nice guy. Yeah. You know, you and I used to have that show. We had the old Conan O'Brien show. We had the old show. Conan O'Brien show. We used show, to follow yeah. Johnny get that again. Because <laughs> <laughs> there'd be an opening there. Yeah, we'd have some fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're having fun now. No, we are. I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, the category, uh, top ten uh, George W. Bush debate strategies. Now, this is it. In a tearful press conference today, Jay Leno announced that he'll be leaving The Tonight Show in 2009. <laughs> what is that? Long time for now. Yes, it is a long time. Uh, let's see. Uh, and so here's what happened. They, uh, uh, Jay Leno, of course, had been the host of The Tonight Show for like 17 years, and, and he said, yeah, I think I'd like to do something else. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. Is that how it happened? I don't know what he said. <clears throat> so they say, great, we'll put you on at 10 o'clock. So now he's going to be on a prime time. So yeah. he's on at 10 o'clock. And then uh, Conan O'Brien, who, who, who used to do the show that Paul and I used to do, yes. when we came over here, they gave that show to Conan O'Brien. Right. And they, now uh, Conan O'Brien is the host of The yeah. Tonight Show. That's right. Tremendous guy. Great. And I don't, I don't know a lot about him. He's a very funny man, very smart. I know that years ago he killed a guy. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. Um, I... <laughs> yeah, maybe I've said too much. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. uh, 